vents. Okay. Okay, so our next presenter this afternoon is Parker Johnson. Parker lives in West Des Moines and attends Valley High School. He is the son of Nicole and Scott Johnson. The title of his project is My Art, My Story, Artistic Perspectives of Youth Refugees. You're up, Parker. Thank you. I was five years old, and I was excited. I was waiting at the airport with balloons, but I never met the person I was waiting for. Her name was Two, which was cool because my brother had just turned two, but my mom said her name was spelled differently. I was also excited because I wanted to hear about where she had been on her trip, but my mom said she hadn't been on a trip, that she was finally coming to meet the rest of her family. I already knew her family. They were kind, but very quiet. My mom and dad helped get them to appointments and practice their English. The oldest brother knew English, and he liked to tell me stories, so I wondered what kind of stories two would have. Everyone has a story. That story, formed by many unique experiences, shapes who we are. Sometimes it's exciting to share those stories with others, but sometimes those stories are too painful or frightening to even remember. Sometimes sharing those stories is difficult because we don't know what to say or how to say it. For a refugee, Getting someone to understand their story can be especially difficult because of language barriers. That's where art comes in. My name is Parker Johnson, and I attend Valley High School in West Des Moines. My project is called My Art, My Story, and my focus has been to arrange projects to benefit and celebrate the talents of young refugees in the Des Moines area. About a decade ago, my family worked to resettle a family from Myanmar, helping them become familiar with daily living in Iowa. It's this original experience that opened my eyes to the refugee community in our state. Since then, I've worked with students in ESL programs in several elementary schools in my district, and I've volunteered my time to help other refugee families in my area. Both demographics I've consistently worked with, both refugees and children, were especially significant with the work of President Hoover. And yes, that's me. <laughs> Herbert Hoover's own actions as a humanitarian were instrumental in helping refugees both during and after significant periods of unrest, aiding Belgians after World War I and Poles following World War II, in addition to millions of Russians during famine in the USSR. Through the American Relief Administration and the Commission for Relief in Belgium, President Hoover was able to directly support these displaced peoples, these refugees, many of whom happened to be children. As a philanthropist, both domestically and abroad, Hoover focused on the betterment of children, the next generation. This same belief is echoed in a short but incredibly powerful quote from the former president himself. Children are our greatest natural resource. Children make up an incredibly significant part of both the global and local refugee populations, about half today. And as such, they should have their stories told. But as they're just kids, they can too easily be dismissed as silly or naive. Though they're smaller in stature, the voices of children can be bolder and far more compelling than those of adults. But the first step is providing a platform for them to tell their stories. This is a key part of my project. Allowing the voices of young refugees to be heard far and wide, both locally and farther afield, and doing so in a way that can be understood by everyone. And what better way than art? Art is an incredible medium, a sort of universal language. There is something very special about art. No words or speech are required, but somehow a specific combination of colors or patterns in a painting or drawing can have a profound emotional effect on its viewers. And this poignancy can be captured in any piece of art, no matter the age or experience of its creator. Now, this project wasn't originally supposed to look like it does now. When I submitted my proposal back in March, I was planning to host a physical art show in the rotunda of the state capitol. Members of the community would be able to stop in, congregate, and peruse the art on display, which sounded like a decent idea until everybody was told that they couldn't stop in, congregate, or peruse anywhere. 
In addition to restrictions on large gatherings this spring, school was canceled indefinitely, which was just slightly problematic, considering that I was planning to work with students at their schools, with teachers and organizations working out of those same schools. All of this seemed to spell doom for a project structured around interacting with people, but with a little bit of time and thought, I shifted gears and changed the structure of my, of my story while keeping the essence intact. In July, only a few weeks after the Uncommon Student Weekend, I got in touch with a local refugee organization, Des Moines Refugee Support, to organize an outdoor art event. I reached out to Des Moines Parks and Rec to secure a shelter to ensure social distancing, and I worked with Des Moines Refugee Support to track down volunteers. We ended up with about 10 or so, uh, many of whom happened to be teachers in the Des Moines Public Schools. With close to two dozen students interested in attending, we also had to work out transportation for every one of them. And through monetary donations from family and friends, I was able to purchase art supplies for each of the students to use in making their creations at this event. We got paint, paints, brushes, colored pencils, and markers, and canvases. On each canvas, I traced an outline of Iowa. And on that scorching Saturday morning in July, my family helped me load our car with tubs of canvases, jugs of water, folding tables, and art supplies for each student prepackaged in a bag. And we headed across town to Evelyn K. Davis Park. Tapes were set up, tablecloths were set down, and following current CDC guidelines, masks were put on. And as the students started to arrive, they began to work. All 23 of the students were given strict instruction to do whatever they liked, and they let their creativity run wild. Some painted, some drew, and some wrote, but each artist produced a distinctive piece of art. As they were working, the teacher volunteers traveled around with questions I had prepared uh, to interview the artists with some fun questions like what their favorite animal was or what's their favorite food, in addition to some more serious <coughs> questions like what their favorite thing was about Iowa or what they wanted to be when they grew up. Once they finished, the kids were able to bring their supplies home to them to continue their artistic creation. In turn, I brought their canvases home with me, where I photographed each piece. Then I built a website, compiled the pictures and the students' responses, and added them to an online gallery for anyone to view. In addition to being able to peruse the artwork, see each student, and learn a little bit more about each of them, you can discover more about refugees in Iowa or internationally, or most importantly, you can order a book. This book, titled My Art, My Story, Refugee Art from the Heartland, is a compilation of each of the students' artwork and their responses. There's a separate page on the My Art, My Story website, called appropriately the book, where visitors can order their own copy for $25. Now, getting this book from the drawing board to my doorstep was quite the process. I wrote, uh, formatted, and designed the book mostly from scratch, but now I can say I know how to write a book and publish a website and use PayPal for sending and receiving invoices. This book is also a fundraiser. Visitors to the site have purchased around 50 copies of the book in total so far. The proceeds from all of these sales, plus donations amounting to just under $1,000, have been donated back to Des Moines Refugee Support, the organization I first worked with, to continue helping the students at my original event and other refugees in the Des Moines metro area. With the help of social media, word quickly spread. A handful of local publications have caught on to the mission of this project, like the DSM Magazine, KCCI News, Eric Hansen's This Is Iowa series, Newsbreak, the Plymouth Church Contact, and the West Des Moines District. Also, since its creation, the virtual gallery has been visited by people from all across Iowa, in addition to 26 other states. All of these allow for these kids' stories to be diffused even further. My Art, My Story has spread across the country allowing these young refugees to show their own creativity and brilliance through their own works and words. After this initial event in July, 
I saw the importance in continuing this into the future. I hosted a second event in August for students at an elementary school in my own district in West Des Moines, and uh, with a similar format and a similar response. Not only was the response to this project also a wholehearted one, but kids at both events absolutely loved the chance to make art. The next logical step for me was to establish a framework to continue holding similar events to these well into the future. I've officially incorporated a nonprofit organization that's, fingers crossed, waiting 501c3 status uh, called the Central Iowa Refugee Arts Initiative. We have a board composed of high school students, adult artists, and teachers to guide events like these further into the future. We've made a Facebook page right here, and we plan to partner with large, established, and more comprehensive refugee organizations to continue offering art enrichment opportunities for student artists in elementary, middle, and high school. This summer was, without a doubt, an uncommon one. It may have seemed like everything, including my project and this uncommon student process, was flipped on its head, but with benevolence and perseverance, traits adhered to by President Hoover, the mission of My Art, My Story remained the same, working to support the refugees in our greater community, in the state of Iowa, and continuing to share the rich stories they have to tell through art. Thank you. So they were given these pieces of paper, had the outline, and the question was, what does Iowa mean to you? Or, yeah, or so they, uh, I prepared each of these canvases, and I, I made a little <coughs> wooden stencil and traced them out for each of the kids. Um, and then they were, they were really given the instruction to, de to decorate however they liked. Some of them, as you can see, said, best Iowa, let's hear it, just because that's what, that's what they felt like like painting, but um, I mean, I yes, yeah, some of them some of them did choose to decorate it how they felt yeah. Iowa meant to them. African flags, mm -hmm. blue waters. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. How did the refugee children learn about this when they weren't in school? How did you get that word out? So the Des Moines Refugee Support the the large organization I've worked with, they have ties really all across Des Moines. And they were, they were keeping in contact with these families even when school wasn't in session. Um, so I got in touch with, um, with Allison, the woman who's in charge of, of the organization, and she kind of sent the word out and, and somehow we got these two dozen students uh, back and they, they came to the event. So it was mostly because of the Des Moines Refugee Support. So do they keep their art then, or you keep it? Yeah, so they, we've returned it to them. Um, in the picture when I, when I was holding the check, that was on the doorstep of this Allison Homan, her house. Um, so we returned all of the canvases to the kids um, and after, after having taken a picture of them and putting them in this book. Yeah. So, so I ordered your book. Yeah. But I'm, I'm so worried I'm gonna miss the email about the PayPal thing. Yet, so I don't want to mess that up. Sure. So well, email come from PayPal or from your. Uh, it should, it should have been sent. Uh, I have a an email for this project. Okay. It should have been sent by that, but okay. Title under PayPal. So. All right. Well, I'll contact you by it. Sure. <laughs> Appreciate that. And yeah, I I I lived abroad for many years, and it was a choice I made. And it was still really difficult sometimes to live in a place that you speak your language, they don't eat the same kind of food, they shout instead of just talk, and just, there's a lot that goes on to this. We have so much compassion for people who have to leave where they're from when they don't necessarily really want to leave exactly. where they're from. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Parker. Great job. Thank you. Thanks again, all of you. I have a pleasure of coming with us.